and the top. Now, the main subject or person in our verse is Jesus. And again, he's speaking to his disciples and the conversation prior to this verse was about salvation. Who can be saved? Who can be delivered? Who can be protected? Who can be prospered? That's what the conversation was about. But in our verse, it opens up by saying, and Jesus looked at them and, and said. These few words are very important to us as young men and young women. Whenever Jesus says something, again, we should treasure it. And let me give you some, some reasons why. Number one, whenever the Lord tells us something, it's true. Whatever the Lord speaks to you, directly or indirectly, it is true. True or truth has a number of meanings, but remember, young man, remember, young woman, truth is unchanging. Truth is something that you can stand on or depend on. And I like to say the truth is just right. And we know here at the MSW that God's way is the right way. Why? Because the Lord is true or true. What is it? John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the, the life. So when it comes to the Lord, he's unchanging. We can depend on him when he tells us something is right and it's not going to change. Notice what David said in Psalm 116 and 160. The entirety of your word is what? It's truth. Y'all ought to help me. The entirety of your word is truth. And of course, Jesus is the word. So when it comes to Jesus and the word and what he says to us, whether it is written or revealed, y'all ought to shout real loud, say it's true. That's right. You don't have to Google it. You don't have to verify it with Siri. No, if Jesus said it, it is, it's true. Even the apostle John, as you're taking notes in Romans 22 and 6, he said that the words that the Lord speaks, they're faithful and true. It may take some time, but it's going to unwind in your life. His words are faithful and true. We used to say you can bank on it. You can take it straight to the bank because it is true. When Jesus speaks something, number two, you got to understand that the enemy going to try to take it. Once the Lord puts something on the table concerning your life, the enemy is going to try to take it out of your heart. He's going to try to steal it. We know the thief comes to young people, but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. So when the Lord gives you a word, you best believe the enemy or Satan is coming immediately to try to take it out your mind. Try to take it out your heart. And, and if he can't take it out of your heart, he going to try to corrupt it. He going to try to poison your mind. He going to try to get you to doubt it. He going to try to get you and me to not believe it. That's his job. He going to try to get that word out of our heart. What will happen if we keep the word in our heart? That's how we cleanse our way. Or that's how we cause our life to be better. How can a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed to the word. See, see, when the enemy knows that you getting a good word, he ought to be ready for a fight when he come your way. Because you got the understanding that what Jesus said is true. And I've got my eyes open looking for the enemy to try to take it out of my heart. 
but I'm not going to let them take it out of my heart. We go through things, but it's because of the word. It's not because we're so special and got it going on and we are special and we do got it going on. But the Bible said he comes for the word's sake. Some of us are going through what you're going through right now because you got a word on the inside of you. He trying to abort that word. He trying to kill that word. But you can't let him take the word out of your heart. Tell somebody he can't take it. He may not can take it, but he going to try. He going to try. Notice Jesus. Y'all with me? Luke 8 and 12. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and does what? takes away the word y'all got to read with me takes away the word out of their heart least they should believe and be saved so my blessing is dependent on me not letting the enemy take out of my heart what jesus said am i right about it finally when jesus says something we need to understand that it will turn out the way he said. Whenever the Lord tells you and I something directly and indirectly, it's going to turn out the exact way that he said. Moses said in Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie. Somebody getting happy, nor a son of man. That he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? I love this part. Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? See, when God speaks something in your life and you got the floods, you got the storms beating against you. You got the enemy fighting you. Don't get discouraged because God going to make it good. He going to turn that situation around in your favor. If he said it, he meant what he said, and it's going to turn out the way he said it. If he said you was going to be the head and not the tail, it's going to turn out with you being on top and not the bottom. If he said that you're going to make it, then don't worry about what you're going through. Just go through the process. It's going to turn out the way that he said you're going to make it. It's going to turn out the way he said. And I don't know about you, but I might be the only one that's going through something right now. And I'm not experiencing some of the things that I thought I would be experiencing. But I got some comfort from this verse right here that lets Baker know and some other folk know that it's going to turn out the way he said that it would in his word. And you ain't going to be broke if you just hang on in there. It's going to turn out the way he said. How did he say it? He's going to supply all the needs according to his riches and glory by his stripes you were healed you may be aching right now you may be sick right now but it's going to turn out the way he said your strength is going to be renewed like the eagles you just got to have a mind that what I see is temporary I'm not too young for a miracle I'm not too young for a blessing it's going to turn out the way he said folks are fighting it folks don't want to see you bless folks talk negative to you folks in your family telling you that you're not gonna get better and they're not contributing to your betterment but you as a young man as a young woman you got to have some fight on the inside of you and say it's gonna turn out the way he said the Bible talks about young people, a young man by the name of Jacob, and he was so determined that he was going to be blessed by the Lord. The Bible says that he wrestled with an angel until the breaking of the morning. He had in his mind, I'm going to get what God said. He had in his mind, it's going to turn out the way God said, and he fought for that blessing so much. The Bible says that his hip came out of place. Sometimes you got to fight for what you want. 
<laughs> and sometimes you may earn or take a stripe, but look at somebody and say, it'll be worth it in the end. When the Lord looked at him, he said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, not no more. Your name is Israel. And he got blessed right there. I want somebody to know if you got some fight on the inside of you, if you don't give up, if you don't cast away your confidence, you're going to get blessed right where you are. In the city of Carrollton, in the county of Carroll, you ain't got to go nowhere else. God going to bless you right here if you just have in your mind it's gonna turn out the way he said tell somebody it's gonna turn out the way he said oh help me encourage somebody say I don't know what you're going through come on everybody's ready to have some church say I don't know what you're going through but you gotta hang on to what Jesus said that's right you gotta hang on you got to hang on, young man. You got to hang on, young woman. Don't go back to the weeds. You got to hang in there. Don't go back to hoeing. You got to hang in there. Don't go back to scamming. You got to hang in there. Don't go back to hoeing. You got to hang in there. Tell somebody it's going to turn out the way he said. It may not look like it, but it is going to turn out because Jesus said it. And he's not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent. What Jesus said, young folk, is true. The enemy going to try to take it. But if we hold on to it, it's going to turn out the way he said it. How many are still with me? We must understand the importance of when Jesus is speaking directly or indirectly. And this is the process. While you're young and when you get old, this is going to be the process. He's going to speak the truth. The enemy going to try to take it. But if we hold on to it, it's going to turn out the way he said. That's the process. Y'all with me? And so in our verse of Matthew 19, and I believe it was 26. Notice what Jesus tells his disciples. He tells them something they need to know. There is a difference between God and man. You got to understand that man and God are different. Man and God are completely, completely different. He wanted them to understand that. And likewise, you and I got to understand that. Because sometimes if we be honest, we try to treat God like he's us. But God is on a total different level than what we are. We need to mature. We need to grow, but even when we grow and mature, God is still on a level by himself. Are y'all with me? Now, he deals with one, but let me add to the one before I deal with it in the verse. Differences between man and God, especially Young men and young women in our day and time need to understand this. And so I want to add to what he says in the verse. Y'all still with me? One difference between God and man. Man was created by God. God is the creator. We are the creation. Man was made or created or formed by God. Mark 10 and 6. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them, help me out, male and female. Who made male and female? That's it. He made them. He made us. The creator. 
The preacher in Ecclesiastes 12 and 1 says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Remember who made you. Paul said in the book of Acts, it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. I'm here because God allowed us to be here. We breathing because God allowed us to still be breathing. Had a young, young adult, matter of fact, two young adults, I think a couple of weeks ago, shared with me two tragic accidents they were in and showed me pictures. Shouldn't have walked away. But the sovereign God said, no, it ain't your time. You're still here. The car ain't, <laughs> but you are. He made you and me. Now think about this before I go on to the next point. If he made you and me, do you think he know this body? So that means when you get sick or when I get sick in this body, who should be the first one that we consult? Sovereign God. He made me. Lord, he can cut grass and don't even have to wear no mask. But when I cut grass, I got to wear two masks. <laughs> he know my body. Well, so you don't get hay fever, Baker. This is what I want you to do. There you go. So I consult him. When you get a headache, you think he know about that headache? Now, if he tell you to grab some Advil, fine. But the question is, did he tell you to do that? When you go through things in your body, remember who created that body. Some of you go to the doctor and the physician or the doctor may say, look, you got this problem. You got that problem. You'll never be able to do such and such. You hear what they say, but you remember you serve the sovereign God. Sat in the office with, with my son and the doctor told him, look, you're going to have to wear this vest for the rest of your life. You're going to have to keep this, these electro things on your heart. You, you'll never be able to play sports again. And we just sat there and listened. Then they sent us to another specialist, and he said the same thing, had his paperwork. And I told him before we went in there, don't you nod your head, yes, just listen. And when they finally begged us for a response, we let them know, we hear what you're saying, but we ain't going along with what you are preaching. A week after, the boy playing sports <laughs> and been playing sports. Matter of fact, the little stuff they gave for him to be hooked up on, I hurry up and melt that back before they started charging us. So they want you to do all this stuff and then you got to pay for it. I said, no, I know the game. And God ain't told us to do this, so we mailing this back during the trial period. Y'all know how we do. You mark your calendar 27 days. Don't forget to cancel this. <laughs> Maybe I'm the only one. But if God created you, when you go through things in this body, consult him. That's why it's dangerous in one sense to start using drugs. You don't know how it's going to affect your body. Somebody else do one thing and it don't bother them. You do the same thing and you got complications. Why even take that chance? Tell somebody he created us. Number two, man is dependent on God. He created us and we are dependent on him. We need God. God really don't need our help. We need his help. Didn't get too much support on that one. I said we need God's help. He don't need our, our help. He gave us this breath. So if the Lord gave, he can also take it away. 
So I want to make sure my ways please him. So I don't die, as the Bible says, before my time. Y'all do know God allowed people to die and some folk he killed. Because they just didn't want to submit to him. Now look at how y'all look. Y'all do know all souls belong to him. He lifts ones up and he puts one <laughs> and he puts one down. We dependent on him. We need him. You think I'm not going to clap these hands? And he done said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I ain't like some of y'all. I'm going to give him the praise. I'm going to clap my hands. I'm dependent on him. You think I'm going to take a chance with his money? You think Timu going to get his money? Amazon going to get his money? Girlfriend, boyfriend going to get his money. You must be crazy. No. He said, you have robbed me of the tithe and the offering. Therefore, you curse with a curse. I ain't got time to be cursed by you, God. So I'm going to willingly bring you what's yours. The Bible says the tithe belongs to God. No, I'm depending on you, Lord. You're going to get yours, and I'm going to work the rest of this with your wisdom. But I'm not touching what belongs to you. Do you feel the same way? I'm depending on him. I got to pray every day. Some days the prayers are longer. Some days the prayers are shorter. But I'm going to make sure I pray every single day. I'm depending on him. Matter of fact, that there's a group called the Kenton Spirituals. They got a song led by one of my singers. I like Harvey Watkins. He says, I'm dependent. <laughs> I'm dependent on you. If that be true, just look toward heaven and say, Lord, finish it. I'm dependent on you. Look at what Jesus told his disciples. Y'all still with me? All right. John 15 and 5. Familiar verse you should know. I'm the vine. You're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears what? Much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You can't even play your PS5 without him. You can't even use that thumb to scroll on TikTok without him. Can't even download Snapchat without him. Can't even braid your hair without, without him. Is that what the verse says? Without me, you can do what? Nothing. Without him, we can do nothing. We're dependent on him. Y'all ought to give him a hand clap for just allowing us to still be here. And so in our verse, he tells the disciples another difference. He says, with men, it's impossible, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. Here it is, young people. If we are in agreement with our sovereign God, he will do what is impossible with men. We got to be in agreement. In other words, we got to believe him. That's the only way we can get the impossible done in our life. The impossible becomes possible when you and I are in agreement or we, buh, we believe. So the question is, what is in your life that's impossible for you to do? 
If you don't have the means, the resources, you don't have the connects or the plug, it's seemingly impossible. It's impossible for you to get out of that debt, naturally speaking, with what you make and how behind you are. Somebody should have said, you're right. You want to pay the vehicle off, but where you are right now, it's just M. It's impossible. It's impossible. You want to leave and go out on your own, but right now you just don't have. And it's not like you're trying to leave for the wrong reasons. You got legit reasons to want to be out on your own. But financially, it's impossible, naturally speaking. And you sit there and you be like, well, why? They got everything I need and I'm over here trying to do such and such for God. And here I am. And they got everything. Oh, it hurts. When you see the prosperity of the wicked. You, you see how the wicked has what you need and what you desire. And in your situation, it's just Im impossible. As a parent, you try to get through to your child. But it just seems impossible. You, you, you're a young couple and you try to get through to your spouse and they just ain't hearing you. It just seems impossible. I'm going to ask y'all again, what seems impossible in your life right now? Do you have at least one thing? And God knows. The Bible says he knows what you have need of. Then the scripture says before you even, before you even ask. It's impossible with men. It's impossible for you to do it. Your idea of going on vacation is just going and staying in the room. You just, you know, I'm going, that's my vacation, I'm going to relax. But in the back of your mind, you want to do some other things while you're there. And you look at your budget and you be like, but I just, I just, it seems impossible. Have you ever faced impossibilities? If you remain in the natural realm, it's going to be impossible. But if you come in agreement with your sovereign God, what's impossible becomes possible. The key is not to dream, not to wonder, it's to believe. You got to believe that what seemingly is unmovable, truth can move it. What seemingly undoable, you got to believe that God can do it. You can't do it. Your job won't do it. Your parents won't do it. But with God is doable. It's doable for you to pay off that credit card. Some of us credit cards, it's doable. It's not impossible. You done calculate it and you think you're going to be paying on it for eight to ten years. But it's possible for God to supernaturally wipe it out. That student loan you've been deferring, it's possible for God to pay it off. It's possible. It's possible. 
It's possible for your next vacation to be the best vacation you've ever had. It's possible. With God, you got to believe it. It's possible for God to give you the money you need to get them books in school. It's possible for God to make a way for you to get a scholarship. It's possible for whatever your heart's desire, as long as it's in line with God's word, for God to do it. Because with God, there's endless possibilities. But you got to believe. You got to believe, sister. You got to be believe. You got to believe that God can put the marriage back together. You, you got to believe that God can call somebody to walk up to you and put something in your hand that's good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And it's not your birthday. It's not your anniversary. It's not Christmas or St. Patrick's Day. You got to believe that he can cause a man to do it. You got to believe it. Now faith is. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, today. You got to believe it right now while the word is coming forth. It's got to get in your mind. Then it's got to come out of your mouth. And then it's got to be reflective in your actions. You got to believe it. You got to believe that God can heal you without you taking some drugs from a doctor. You got to believe that if you just praise him, lift him up, that, that he'll come down in the mist and he'll do something in your body that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. You got to believe that he can take that lump away. You got to believe that it's possible. For you to be happy again. Be joyous again. You've been down too long. You've been stressed too long. But you got to believe that God can put a joy on the inside of you that can strengthen you like never before. You got to believe when you're with God or in agreement, young people, the possibilities are endless. The possibilities are endless. And whatever it is that you have in your life or those list of impossible things that you have in your life, it's time to get in agreement with God and his word so God can do the impossible in your life. It's some things that he has ordained for him to do, not your parents. It's certain things in your life that he has ordained for him to do and not your job. And there are certain things in life he has ordained for him to do and not you. You can't do it. Man is limited. And as much as we love God and try our best, it's only so much we can do. But how many in your mind right now while I'm ministering, you're starting to see, man, if I just get on the same page and stay on the same page with God, what I have in my heart is possible. It's possible. It can change. It can it can become good. It can work out for my for my favor. But you got to believe y'all read this verse with me. Mark nine twenty three. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said to him, if you can help me believe. believe all things are what possible to him who believes all things. All things, man, I used to think it was impossible for me to pay off my student loan or God to help me to pay it off. Man, I deferred it so many years made minimum payments, and that balance just stayed, stayed the same. But I said, Lord, you know my desire, and I kept doing what I could do. Then messed around. I caught, caught some rhythm. And every time I got some money, then the Holy Spirit would say, all right, now I want you to make sure you add this to that student loan payment. He was guiding me in all truth. And I could see one day I'm going to get this letter and it's going to be paid off. Then I'll never forget two years ago, the president at the time 
He said, look, I'm not going to cancel out no student loans, but what I am going to do is I'm going to make it zero interest. So that means every time you make a payment, everything you pay is going straight to that principal balance. Y'all still with me? And man, I didn't know how much headway I was getting till one day the Holy Spirit said, call and check your balance. Man, I called and the guy said, hey, Mr. Baker, how you doing? Oh, man, you've been doing real good. Seems like you you basically paid off your your balance. I said, show now. <laughs> he said, yes, Mr. Baker. You've been making payments when there was zero balance and it was knocking off that principal payment till it got down to something I could just pay for and Holy Spirit go ahead and just finish it off right now and knock this slap, slap off. We used to have a car that we were paying too much for. Man, we were paying too much for. But we made the deal because we were desperate. We shouldn't have did it, but we wouldn't have had no way home that day because we needed a car. And man, it was rough paying that all them years. But then God finally blessed us to pay, pay that off. And then from that moment on, every vehicle we got, he showed me how to do it and pay it off in about 24 months. He said, look, you do this right here every time. And then in two years, you just pay it off. What was impossible became what? Became possible. Then I, I was struggling with certain things in my body. And I would just constantly ask God about it. Like I told y'all earlier. And then he just said, look, I want you to do this right here. And every time it, it flares up or it does this in your lungs, I want you to do this right here. And ever since then, I have not struggled with that particular thing. What was impossible became, became possible. Became possible. But I got in agreement with his word. I began to believe it. Y'all still with me? I want to close it with this. Y'all go to Luke 8 on your app or in your Bible. And I want to show you a text that we should learn from and pull out some truth and apply it to our life when it comes to believing God for the impossible. I'm not going to read all of it, but it's verses 49 through 54. And it's about Jesus being summoned to come to this man named Jairus house who had a daughter who was ill. So ill to where she died. And so they came to Jesus saying, look, hurry up and come. She's sick. We want you to come and pray so she can be made well. There's nothing else we can do with trusting you to come. By the time he decided to go to the house, she had died. So they came to Jesus and said, hey, ain't no need of you coming to the house now. The girl has died. So it was basically, naturally speaking, M impossible. She gone. Jesus' first response was, she ain't dead. She sleep. So when you believe in God, you got to talk a certain way. You got to think and talk a certain way. They speak in death, but he's speaking life. She ain't dead. She's sleeping. So then he goes to the house and they laughing at him already. Before he even get to the house, they're talking about him. The Bible says they're ridiculing him. He gets into the house and they crying and mourning. And the text says that he took everybody that was laughing at him and crying and kicked them out the house. He was believing for the impossible to be done. So that he didn't need to be surrounded by anybody that was thinking contrary to how he was thinking. Second lesson, when you believe in God for the impossible, you need to watch who you hang around. 
You watch who you share your business with. You don't want somebody to plague or contaminate what you believe in God for. So then he got into the house and then he went into a room with the parents, the girl on the bed, and three of the disciples. And notice what he says in verse 50. Y'all still with me? He says, and when Jesus heard it, he answered and said, saying, do not be what? Only and she will be made well. Don't fear. Just only believe. See, when we trust God, believe, talk right, think right, God, in the process of time, causes what's impossible to be made possible. He took the girl by the hand, prayed for her, and guess what she did? She got up. And then he said, look, go on and get something to eat. <laughs> go on in there and get you something to eat. Get your strength up. Now, imagine if you were there. What would you have been thinking if you saw that whole process? Your sister, your friend you went to school with was dead. But then the preacher come over, pray for her. She get up and go get something to eat. What would be running through your mind? See, some of y'all don't even want to participate. I mean, golly. That would be something crazy. I know some of y'all take your phone out right then <laughs> and start recording. But everybody that was in the house didn't have no phone. All they had was belief. Oh, that's a word for somebody. Put down that phone and start believing. Put down that phone and start believing. Because our sovereign God can cause the possibles, the possibilities to happen in our life. And it does not matter what it is. If we trust him and believe in him, there's endless possibilities. How many got it? Let's give God a hand clap. I'm going to stop right there.